Kim's ear on. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to take it back the other way. That's a two-way move, man. So we're going to do a convoy from here down to hopefully another road that's open. Hopefully we can don't have to turn around. We can't confirm that. We've got two fuel trucks. James, Teresa, portable power, hand washing station, and my truck. We'll see how this goes. is done trying to get sig signal I'll try to reach out and see if it works at all and that's about all I got and what about IEPs we gotta get those at six o'clock still here tomorrow so what we're gonna they do they can is always give them to the to like somebody that's going up to meet the divisions so well we don't know who that would be and they have to be here at a we were told that they uh, have they, to be they here they want to sit there and use this driver's too I mean yeah just let, let them know where it is and Okay. You know where to find me. Okay, let's do the bumper. Ready? Thank you. Cesar. <laughs> Cesar from Colville. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Hey, thanks much. Yeah. This is we brought. These are lights. I loaded my trucks all water, water, water. Big copy maker, more water. Another of those umbrella lights. Small generator. Those are all MREs. These guys might be eating MREs for the next couple of days. And well, this is a big yurt. What? Portable generator, that's for water pumps and stuff. That's all part of the yurt. This thing's the main frame for it. They call it the coffin. It's a four person lift. It's pretty heavy. So we got we gotta figure out how we're getting out of here without going back the way we came in now. So we, we didn't get too far. This was our hopefully short way home.
<laughs> That's some big boy stuff. That's big boy stuff. We gotta get the mechanic to look at those brakes. <laughs> Tell me your name and where you're from. I'm Crooked River James from Crooked River Ranch, Oregon. I'm a ground support driver. I got a one ton flatbed stake side. <laughs> and I haul anything they want. You call, we haul. That's our motto here <laughs> at Camp Archie. <laughs> where you from? What's your name? Dave, that's Calvin. He remembered you a little while ago, but I think he's a little camera shy. Oh, what? He's looking on that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I worked with you up there at Lost Creek Lake. Dave, this is Calvin. <laughs> Good job, Calvin. Where's, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Mitchell, and I'm from Riddle, Oregon. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Jesse! Jesse. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right. It's my daughter's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. Right, Thanks, yeah. guys. up on the rock scalers. That's Teresa Pointner up front leading the pack. We got a four way convoy going up. Our trucks and everybody else is waiting, and you can see there's still a lot of work to be done here.
you just drop it? But it's amazing how quick they can open it up after they drop that bunch of trees. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Odot's opening this tomorrow. That's what she said, yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll see. I'm not ready to deal with all the people. Yeah, I mean, it was. You could. Oh, yeah. Three on the guardrail. Copy that. What are you guys out up doing? We got a bunch of hose and pumps and those portable water tanks and fittings and a bunch of shit to go retrieve. No, we're taking it up there. We're going around the far side to where it's advancing. We're gonna try to get in front of it and set up some lines and still moving pretty good or yeah, I don't know. I'd... It had moved some from the last couple of days, it looked like, on the maps they gave us, but yeah. Uh, with the winds. Huh? The winds kind of put it yeah. moving a little bit. But they're able to do some airdrops, too. That's, you this, know. This guy's have cleared up for it, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Todd, this is Matt. Can I talk to you on this for a second without interrupting things? Really? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, we left, we left Glide, and I forget what it was. It was like 12, 12.30. I don't know what time it is now. Yeah. What time? 1.30. So, yeah, not pretty much an hour to get to here. But this is the last one, right? I think so. I don't believe so. I think, there's, I think there's someone else down below us. I think there's, and then the right tree company is down there by Diamond Lake. Yeah, we're not going that far. Yeah, and then Jenny back, oh, that's how they do that. Jenny back there was saying they're gonna have to get the rock skaters back up there again because of all the stuff they've loosened up. Hey, you guys are careful to have a highway, but I'm just flagging behind this. I had rocks falling all over here the last couple of days. Well, you know these guys are going back and forth and moving stuff out of the way as they go through, and then you turn around and come back. <clears throat> or he'd stop you and he'd get out rolling stuff as big as a medicine ball and then coming back stuff as big as softballs you know stuff that damage your windshield or truck right yeah, i mean there is one oh shoot the size of your the size of your forehead like stuff like that and you know when i'm coming out here in the morning it's still dark everyone else is hauling ass you know and i'm like yeah, yeah. I've been out here for all the friggin' uh, we'll, we'll, the winter clean up and shit like that, so. You live around here then? Roseburg. Roseburg, a local. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? Spokane. Oh, man. I was uh, BSing with uh, one of the fire investigators out of Colorado over here. Yeah? And uh, my daughter fired, started up Steamboat here. That's where it started. Here. That's where it started? That's where it started. And, uh. He automatically, I didn't even hardly, I didn't, wasn't even getting ready to ask, because you know, oh, we're pretty sure it's just kind of like a big street, kind of, the way he's going off, which is, uh, really interesting, you know, I'm not going to say, like, you know, Where are you guys at? You guys down at Eagle Rock? Yeah, Eagle Rock. No, no, no. Uno, dos, one, two.
Bully, bully. for yourself. Roger that. You can tell who the dog people are. You got the spot. Look at that. Yeah. Camp Archie. Yeah, working on putting up the yurt. Dave's in here doing a great job. We got Dave and Dave. And Dave and Dave. Daryl and Daryl and Daryl are here. And we got Ken. We got Jim. We got Patrick. The mechanic's just standing by. You know, just in case we. He's got something he could do. In case we have problems. <laughs> and I'm, I'm choking with all the smoke in the background. And Dave, I appreciate you uh, listening to all this stuff. And so as, as the world turns here at Camp Archie, Dave's doing a great. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that, Billy. But Billy's doing a great job doing all the camera work. And here comes our buddy Big Jack. <clears throat> and there, of course, is Jim. He don't like to be filmed. Don't film him. Uh, and Calvin's not here. That's good. He wouldn't. I worked out of there for three years before I ever left. The guy that managed it, he was an old time. He said, I'm retiring, Jack. You better get out to the district because we got a bunch of dumb assholes coming in. <laughs> he was right, huh? Yeah, I guess he was. And it's got the rune uh, Gungnir on it, which is one of the runes on Odin's staff that makes it so that he never misses his mark whenever he throws it.
was a hell of a load, dude. <laughs> I, have a, uh, I have a compression brake, like a big brake on my on that thing. So I can just go down here and just click it, and it just crawls right down the hill. It did pretty good. You're in the way, Dave. <laughs> oh, you did it on purpose, just to protect me. <laughs> yeah. It's not any warmer than it was yesterday. Oh, here comes your fire truck. There we go. That wasn't so bad yesterday. It's okay, Jack. Yo. I've never seen you move so quick.
Yeah, so the guy that sent me down this road got two flat tires. But he's the boss man up here, so I'm going where he said to go to drop point 71. I think I'm on the right road. I think I made a wrong turn. The road stops here. I got to turn around and go back. All right, I'm back on the right road. I just went past uh, three miles to go to get to somewhere. the other way I thought I was supposed to be going down and I saw this one climbing up the side of the ridge so I'm hoping we start down to get to the valley floor in a little while better we're going down for sure second gear and I'm still on the brakes once in a while all right I found, I found my guide to help get me out of here they wanted to go first They're going to help me load up the hose down here, too. Jeez, I'm getting crowded. Getting crowded up here. Had to do all that for this load. A couple tubs, a thousand feet of hose, some couplings, and another flat tire. Okay, we moved from the fairgrounds. In fact, all three spike camps that we were supplying from the fairgrounds have all moved to this camp now. I guess they're no longer too worried about COVID. So everybody's here. We got, I think I got the tent set up about 10, 10.30 by the time we got here. Long story, nobody knows what's going on. There's Dave's tent, the blue and white one. Mine's back there by my truck, the orange one. And I gotta move my truck because it's not supposed to be parked there. But driving here last night, <coughs> people were out here in sleeping bags in this grass field. And as I was driving my truck in, little heads would pop up from their sleeping bags like gophers or something. Was that whack-a-mole thing. I had to be careful not to run over them, so I decided just to leave the truck there. They were not happy campers, but it's kind of the way they did things for us. Cowboy. Oh 
cowboy. Hey, cowboy. What did you say, 11 weeks? 12. 12 weeks? Yeah. He's one of Aspen's buddies. He gets to play with Aspen when oh, she yes, comes he out. Does. Yes, he's a boy. Where are you from? Uh, Prineville. I uh, there about two years ago from Texas. Yeah. He's cute. Thank you. Hey, buddy. <laughs> what is he? He's an English chocolate lab. English Labrador. Look at that. Good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah. Oh, no, no. He probably spent the night there. No cold bars like that either. No. Air conditioned suite. They need traffic control out here. That's the main highway 138 going east where all that stuff was done the other day. There's my bike, ground transport. Been like this since six o'clock this morning, the last hour and a half is all you see. Drop point sixty, a new spot. That sign says eleven miles to road number twenty seven. I believe this is road twenty seven oh three that I came up. Here's what I'm coming up to pick up. Not the straw. Pumpkin. They call them pumpkins. Got an engine crew coming up to help. I guess I got to drain the water out of it. I can get that started. They're going to be here at 2 o'clock. I got here half an hour early. So I'm having a break. Waiting for help to show up. Kind of awkward and they weigh like 100 pounds. Empty, dry, packed.
Now speak up so Dave can hear you. Speak up. <laughs> one more time. Uh, what am I supposed to talk about? Demo. Oh, I your, forgot. Your Demo experience. Well, now listen where, close, Dave. This is a good one. I go where the Demo. There's this lady out front. She says, check in a Demo on her little tent. She got a table out there. She's cleaning all the germs off of it. She had the IAPs, you know, on basket of IAPs. And I said, well, she said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I want a demo. She says, what time do you demo? I said, I don't have any idea. She says, have you not read your IAP this morning? I said, we don't, I'm ground support. We don't get an IAP. Well, everybody gets an IAP. I said, well, we don't. She said, you're supposed to come over here every morning and each one of you get an IAP. And then you go to briefing. I said, well, I've never got an IAP recently. And I don't even know where briefing is. Well, she says, okay, here, she, she's you did them over at 11.45. And I, she says, and you read this right here, this is how you do it. I says, ma'am, we got a problem. I says, not only do I have to take my hearing aids out, put my mask on, my glasses fogged up so I can't hear you and I can't see you. Well, I'll just read it for you. I said, that would be great. <laughs> so she was, oh, she was getting hot. So, and I, I think I said, she said, you need to call these two numbers. I should have told her I don't have a phone. That would really tipped her over right there. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so that's what you got to deal with when you go over there. So you've been you warned. You don't even have to go over there. You just call those two numbers. I think I'll go over there. I could be going to her after more. I wish you would. Because I don't know nothing about this. I, this is my first year I've been out here. You really, you'll keep her, you'll keep her right over. She'll have a ship butt. She'll blow a gas. <laughs> So then I left. I was about ready. I was getting ready to just grab her by the nap of her head and jerk her around. But that wouldn't been a good idea because I want my money. <laughs>